making the spinny thing go spin spin. How to control a DC motor using a micro bit. Hmm. Well, our plan is this. We will use a Kicktronic motor driver. We'll get power, 5 volt power, from a USB power bank. We'll use a USB to alligator clips, the black alligator clip. We'll go to ground, the negative terminal here. The red alligator clip will go to positive. And we'll have our motor plugged into motor one here. Uh, don't worry about if uh, you flip these two around, because if you plug it in backwards, the motor will just go backwards. It is very bad if you plug these in backwards. Don't do that, please. Um, but yes, the motor, it doesn't matter if you plug that in backwards. You will need one uh, micro bit, one motor driver board for a micro bit. One DC motor. This is a DC motor. Mine has gears on it to make it move slower. This shaft moves much slower. But you can just do it with the motor itself. The motor does need to have wires soldered to it. Breadboard wires. You will also need USB to alligator clips. So this it goes from a USB port and breaks it out into a positive alligator clip and a negative alligator clip uh, and you will need to plug it into either a USB power bank or some other USB port to get our 5 volt power. Uh, you will also need a big old bunch of breadboard wires. Uh, these are called male to male breadboard wires. Step 1. Insert the micro bit into the motor driver. Step 2. Uh, you've got your power bank with your alligator clips. Well, to the black alligator clip, add a breadboard wire. The colour doesn't really matter, um, but I just use black because it's the same as this. And do the same for the red alligator clip. Step three, unscrew, not fully unscrew, but just a little bit loosen this terminal. Um, if this screw goes above that line, above the plastic there, then maybe it'll fall out, then you gotta put it back in. Uh, it just has to be a tiny little bit loose. You will use a flathead screwdriver for this. And then do the same for the red terminal, the positive. Then get your uh, the wire that was plugged into the red alligator clip, screw that into this side, and the same for black. So now, hopefully, the one going from the black alligator clip is screwed into black, and the one going from the red alligator clip is screwed in to the red. Hmm. Before we proceed, let's have a look at how this motor will work. Remember, if we plug it in backwards, it would just go backwards. Suppose that this pin 12 is set to positive 5 volts. In other words, we turn it on, I suppose. And pin 8 is ground. Then, we'll have a current flowing from positive to negative. Conventional current goes from positive through the motor and to negative. So there is a flow of electricity. There is current, electrical current. So the motor will move in some direction. Let's call that direction forwards. But then, what if I had it the other way around? Oh, you can't really see pin 8 there. That's okay. Suppose that pin 12 was at ground and pin 8 was at higher, uh, positive 5 volts. Well then, electricity flows from positive to negative, so it will go through here. There is still current, but the current is in the other direction, so the motor will spin the other way, it will go backwards. Hmm, what about if both of these were at ground? We just set them both to zero. Well, now, there is no current. They're both at the same level. So the motor will just break. It will do nothing. For a trick question, what if they are both at 5 volts? Well, now they're both at the same level. It won't flow from one to the other because they're at the same voltage. So it will also break. And now, let's get into coding. So let's learn how to code this thing. You will need to open up the microbit make code editor. 
if you Google it, it'll come right up. It's makecode.microbit.org. And we're going to make a new project. This is going to be a test for our DC motor. Maybe I will call it DC motor demo. Under code options, we're going to be using Python. So you can change this to be a Python only project and then create. Hooray! We have an empty project. Now we want to um, turn a pin on. Which pin do we want to turn on? Hmm. Well, according to our diagram, if we turn pin 12 on and pin 8 off, in other words, pin 12, 5 volts, and pin 8, ground, then it should go forwards, right? So let's per turn pin 12 on and pin 8 low. Advanced pins. We're going to advance because we're advanced kitties doing advanced coding. Uh, and if we go to pins, we don't want to read the pin. We want to write the pin. We want to set it to be, you know, either low or high. Uh, so I said pin 12. Uh, pin 12 needs to be on. In other words, one. And I can copy that and paste it and say that pin, hmm, pin eight needs to be ground, zero volts. Uh, so this will be high, this will be low, and so it should spin. Uh, and if we press play, there'll be no visible effect really here. You can see that this pin, um, which is pin 12, really is on, but it's kind of hard to see the motor turning. To get the motor turning, you'll have to um, put this program on your microbit. Now to do that, there are a few ways. If you press download, then it will give you the hex file and you can follow these instructions uh, to put that hex file on your microbit. However, what you can do is you can pair the device instead. This makes it a little bit easier in the future. You follow these instructions, you go pair advice. Oh no, no device is found. That is because you do need to plug it into your microbit. If I plug this micro USB cable into the microbit, pair device, yay! Then it comes up there, I can connect. It'll take a little bit, just give it a few seconds to think. And then you can download and it will be on your microbit. Uh, so now that that program's on your microbit, you can see the motor spinning. Yay! All right, that's how you get the motor spinning. In the next video, I will show you how to control the spinning so you can make it pause and move backwards. Bye!